place is amazing. I absolutely love this course. It has been by far the best drive of the day. What's going on everybody? Kelly and I'm bringing you a brand new video today. So today we're actually in Michigan. I made the trip up here yesterday and I'm actually going to be staying here for a couple few days. So we're actually going to be playing a couple different courses out here in Michigan. I am so excited to be back up here playing courses that I'm pretty, pretty familiar with. I'm just super excited to be out here. So today, we're actually going to be playing one of my favorite courses here in Michigan. It's gonna be Independence Lake. So we're gonna be playing one of the 18s here today. They actually have 36 holes here, two 18s, which is super cool. I absolutely love this course. I think we're going to be playing, I'll have to see what, we're, what side we're actually playing and let you guys know. Um, this side is actually, I believe, the newer side. So recently, all of these holes have been put in here. It's super nice. This, Like I said, one of my favorite courses actually here in Michigan, probably other than like Flip City. We are going to see how well we can actually shoot out here today. So through 36 holes, the best I've ever shot out here is actually plus three. So on this 18, we're just gonna look to shoot better than plus three and hopefully beat my record here. Today. That we're actually going to be playing today is called Red Hawk West. We're gonna be playing all the shorts here today. I am super excited to be out here and show you guys this course. I remember one time me and my buddy Eric were actually coming out here probably in one month. I think we came out every single weekend to this course and played. It's super cool. Also down the street from Independence um, is actually Hudson Mills, which is another really nice course. And then you also have a disc golf store down the street not too far probably about a 10 minute drive called cj's i highly recommend checking it out there super super nice place they have tons and tons of discs in there um, but we're gonna head into hole one and see how well we can actually shoot out here so let's get into it hole one is i'm gonna show it to you guys so you can see the pin right now it's actually right there the t-pad is going to be down there so we're going to be going uphill a lot figured i'd show you guys that before we get into the hole one like I, you saw is gonna be up this hill here. It is going to be in the A location, which is 318 feet, par three. Just wanna get something up there and not end off to the left side, actually. So we're actually gonna start the round off with the P-Line FD. I'm gonna push off to this right side here. Hopefully I have something go pretty far up there, actually towards the basket, not have too much finish at the end. The hill on this side actually slopes down really, really far. So you don't want anything to push too far or hyzer too much off at the end. So we're just gonna push this right side as much as we can, a little bit of finish at the end. All right, a little bit too much hyzer. I didn't put enough into that actually to get it up and going straight enough. So we're gonna be off on that left side. We should have a look at the basket though. Well, I just wanna thank you all so much for tuning in here today and hanging out with me out at Independence. This place is amazing. I absolutely love this course. I think on Udisc it's rated about 4.4, 4.5. It is freshly mowed, it looks like too, which is super nice. The maintenance of this course is amazing. They take very, very good care of it. The T signs are great. There's two T pads. Um, actually, I think there's three T pads here. There's shorts, longs, and then there's, I don't know what this actually is right here. I think that's another T pad that you, that you can tee off from. But as you can see up here now, how thin this fairway actually is. So we're gonna be off down that way a little ways but we should be able to get up and down here so we are going to have a look at the basket pretty clear look actually so i'm going to give this a run at the basket and hopefully get up and down this hill sit oh that might have pushed too far All right, well, unfortunately, start with the bogey, but that's all right. Man, I can't tell you how excited I am to be back out here in Michigan playing in, in what feels like super familiar courses, 
courses that I've been playing for, for quite some time now. It's great to be back here. I love being able to come out to courses like this that are in the woods, got a little bit of open holes. It's a lot different than the Ohio and Kentucky golf that I'm used to playing lately, actually. So I'm super excited to see how well we can actually shoot out here at Independence Lake. Today I was actually in Kentucky and I was going out to film a video for the Wednesday upload for this week. And I get all the way to Kentucky from, from Ohio because I was still down there actually. And I actually forgot the tripod. I drove all the way there, didn't have the tripod. Nobody else is out here to help me film. So unfortunately couldn't upload a video on Wednesday. I just want to apologize about that. Um, but we're going to get back on the grind here, back on schedule. Won't forget the tripod anymore, actually. Hole two is gonna be a par three, 240 feet. You can see it just straight ahead there. So I'm gonna take the Adam Hammonds Wasp here. Gonna go off to this right side of the fairway here and have a slight finish at the end. Basket is tucked up on a hill a little bit, so we need to push pretty far, give this thing a little bit of height so that I can get the distance it needs. Dang, it hit that front hillside and then rolled, unfortunately, into the rough. We should still have an open look at the basket, though. If you're in Michigan and you haven't checked out Independence Lake yet, I highly recommend coming and playing this course. It is pay to play. I believe it's like 10 bucks to get into the park for parking, and then it's only $2 to actually play. But it's well worth it when you come out here and pay to play, actually. It's very, very well maintained out here. The only thing that I will say and warn you about is there's a ton of mosquitoes out here right now. So I highly recommend bringing some bug spray. I unfortunately didn't bring any. You'll probably see them across the lens a couple times here, but either way, having such a fun time out here already. I'm gonna see what we can do here with our lie actually, and hopefully give this thing a run at the basket. We gotta go up and over this hill. That's parked in there for par. Hole three, gonna be 525 feet, par four. You're gonna wanna push something down that gap that you're seeing there. Just stay in the open and out of the rough on both sides there. This lines up really well for a forehand actually. So I'm actually going to take the S-Line DD3 here, pump something through this right gap here and hopefully have something just sit in the fairway so that we can have an easy up and down to look at a birdie. That should be absolutely perfect. I am so stoked on that drive. You can see the basket now, right down there. And you can actually see where I ended up, right in the middle of the fairway. I'm gonna take the bush now and see how far we are away right now. It says it's about 250 away. I'm gonna take my Glow 400 PA3 here. Try and go up the right side actually. I know this thing has a little bit more finish than my other PA3s in my bag. So we're gonna go up the right side gap Hopefully get the distance that we're looking for and a little, little finish towards the end. Uh, didn't hit the gap I actually wanted there. That's gonna be well short, but we that should be an easy par actually. Oh, I didn't give it enough. We'll walk away with a par on that par four. We really had a great drive there, but we just needed to get uh, have a better up and down actually for the approach shot. If we were a little bit closer, that would have been a definite birdie. But either way, we're still we're still only plus one through the first three holes, which is which is decent. But we're definitely going to look to get some birdies here on these next few holes. This next one's super super cool. Par three, two hundred seventy-nine feet up the hill and then off to the left. There is going to be water on this left side where those trees are, you're gonna to wanna to put something out on a hyzer out that way and have a nice finish towards the end. I'm gonna go with my Adam Hammers Wasp here. Just put this thing out pretty straight to begin with and have a nice reliable finish at the end. That's one of the reasons why I love the Wasp. Such a reliable fade at the very end of the flight. Push. 
Ooh, that got super sneaky. I think it went through that tree. I let it go a little bit early. Hopefully it's not in the water because right where I threw it, if it didn't push far enough, we're gonna be in the water and we're gonna be OB. Actually ended up pushing through that tree. We should be, we should be really close to the basket if we're not OB. Oh yeah, I can already see it right now. We're pretty close. We should be able to get up and down for a birdie here. Water I was actually talking about, that's the drop zone. If you actually go into this little pond area right here, but we're gonna have a great look for a birdie here. There we go. Stoked on that birdie. Really stoked on that drive and even more stoked to get a birdie here pretty early on through the 18 holes that we're playing out here at Independence Lake today. That's gonna put us back at even going into hole five. Man, I am super stoked on that. If you take a look back actually, like look at how nice this green looks. That's hole four here. Super, super cool hole. Man, I love me some Michigan golf. I par three, 327 feet, dog leg to the right. You're gonna want a high is there, more than likely a forehand or do a turnover backhand, just at that gap that I'm zoomed in right now. I'm gonna take the Andrew Marweed Firebird here, try and give this thing a lot of hyzer, not push too straight actually, so we can get this finish that we're looking for towards the basket down to the right. Ah, uh, went in too tight and hit that tree, unfortunately. We're gonna be well short of the basket. See the basket now, it's just tucked in right there. We just ended up off in the rough, not too bad actually, right there. This lines up best for a backhand. Just a nice straight approach at the basket. Little off to the left, but we'll have a clean putt at it. There we go, clean up a par there. Par three, 320 feet straight ahead. Definitely gonna wanna take something that's super controllable here, something like a fairway driver. So I'm gonna go with my Kevin Jones F5 here. This hole actually reminds me a lot of playing in Florida, actually. Ah man, didn't give it the height it needed. It was flying pretty nice, but just didn't give it enough height. Like I mentioned this hole specifically reminds me a lot of playing disc golf in Florida actually. A lot of the courses are really tight, narrow fairways with low ceilings. This one has a super, super low ceiling here actually. I love playing holes like this, super awesome. We're gonna be in the fairway actually, so we should have an easy look at the basket for either throwing it in for a birdie or getting the par. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, that almost went in. That was awesome. Dang, that was such a good approach shot. I thought that was going in for sure. We barely needed it to go a little bit higher actually to get up and over the basket there to hit that birdie. That would have been huge. Big Z Fierce, really, really good disc. Highly recommend it seven i believe this is in the a location right now so it's going to be 259 feet par three you have two different gaps that you can actually go here you either go up this right side with a flippy backhand either mid or fairway or you elect for the sidearm play up this side i'm gonna go with the andrew marweed firebird here and go up this left side gap actually try and keep this thing pretty low as you can see it's a pretty low ceiling here so we're gonna have to keep this low maybe play for a little bit of skip action off the ground skip. got a little skip we should be pretty close to the basket and have a look at the birdie here man i really wish on that last hole on hole six we would have got that birdie with that throw in it was probably about, I would say 70 feet maybe. But we had a pretty good drive here on hole seven as well. We should have a open look at a birdie putt here actually. Right now, 
through seven or through six holes were actually even, which is pretty big going into these last final holes on this front nine. If we can stay in that even range or even go negative going into this back, that'll be huge out here at Independence Lake. So we're gonna take a look at where we ended up and hopefully get this birdie here. So we actually ended up a lot shorter than I thought we did. We didn't get as big of a skip as I would have liked, but we're gonna give this thing a jump putt and see if we can put this thing in the basket for a birdie. Oh, just not enough on it. Eight par three, 284 feet. You're gonna see the basket just down that way. All right, we're gonna take the P-Line FD here, push something out there pretty straight, make sure we try and miss those trees that are guarding the basket, actually, and have a little, little finish at the end. Just gonna wanna put something out there pretty straight. Oh man, we hit those initial trees that are guarding the basket. It pushed through and actually pushed towards the basket. We should have an open look for a birdie there. Oh, way too high. Final hole here on this front nine at Independence Lake is going to be a par three, basket is right down there, 276 feet. I'm gonna go with the Kevin Jones F5 here. I'm gonna put this on a little bit of hyzer, see if I can get this thing to flip up to flat and just push pretty far. We're gonna wanna go on this right side more so than the left. It's pretty rough on this left side actually, so hopefully we can get something up and close to the basket here on this final hole. Wow, that has been my best drive of the day so far. I hyzer flipped that thing just like I wanted to. I'm really hoping it got the distance that it needed to actually get a birdie here on this final hole. It has been by far the best drive of the day. Did exactly what I wanted to do, actually. Little bit of hyzer on it, flipped up to flat, and had a nice reliable finish at the end. That's why I love the F5. I highly recommend checking out an F5, whether it be 400 plastic, 400G, or even the new signature series with that 500 plastic. But I think we're really close to the basket here and should be able to end this round with a birdie. Absolutely parked the drive here. Really stoked on that. That is going to conclude the front nine out here at Independence Lake. I have had an amazing time so far playing one of my favorite courses here in Michigan. On the round right now, we are actually one down, which is awesome. We only took one bogey, got two birdies out here, which is huge. We also almost threw in like a 75 to 80 foot approach shot. That was, that was amazing as well. I wanna thank you guys all so much for tuning in here today and hanging out with me on the course. If you enjoyed the video so far, make sure you leave a like down below. Leave a comment on what you thought of Independence Lake so far, and be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can tune into the back nine out here. Thank you so much again for watching and we will see you in the next one.